Retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis joining us now with some military insight into the ongoing situation. Good to see you again. Thanks for giving us some time on this on this Monday morning. At this point, is there any way, is there any response from America that does not widen this conflict? I, I just don't see it if there is. I mean, this is one of the things I've been beating the drums on for many months now is that all of our troops in, in Iraq and in Syria and these places are nothing but a point of strategic vulnerability. Because here's the ironic part. If these troops weren't there, you, Iran-backed groups wouldn't even have the capacity to strike us. That's the only way they can hit us, by having these known spots on the map. And, you know, it's 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 been pure luck so far that we haven't already had some troops killed. It was the time, I believe it was in uh, late November, when a drone hit a barracks in, in, our, in Erbil where American troops put the bomb didn't blow up. That's the only reason we didn't have it before. And now that it finally has happened, but as you just pointed out there, there's many on Capitol Hill that are saying hit Iran, hit Iran hard, hit them now. But that's not going to solve the problem because they're prepared for this already. Uh, and, and anything that we do, especially into Iran, is definitely going to have a response. And then the, all these people who are advocating we do that have to answer, then what? What are you going to do then? What if Iran doesn't back down? What if they don't deter themselves, which is what the, allegedly we want to do? What if they escalate it? Now what are we faced with potentially expanding and getting into a war where even more American troops could be killed in action? And that is not in American national interests. Every time you come on the show and we talk about this, you talk about, you know, just the just fear of a miscalculation. Is that what happened or is there, was there really no way to avoid this? Do you believe that we have done, made every step um, properly and correctly? No, I definitely do not think that. Uh, look, the, 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 the facts on the ground speak for themselves. This is the 160th attack that we've had since October 7th. And of course, there were many before that. And so we know what they've been doing. We know all these strikes that we have done, these, these alleged strong messages, none of which were actually uh, successful and effective. So we know it's not going to stop them. We've seen it with our eye now. So to, to not take any further action and leave our troops there is just inviting what we now have. And, and so if we do more of that and just say, well, we'll just escalate a little bit more, then of course they're gonna continue on and we'll probably get more attacks and even more Americans could die. Until we solve this problem by getting the troops out of pointless harm's way, and I do wanna point out, we're not talking about evacuation or withdrawal, we're just talking about redeployment to places that make more sense, that are continue to provide our national security in the region, but don't have our troops at pointless vulnerability. Until that happens, these kind of strikes will continue on and we could get drawn into a full on war. And I'm just wondering if you were behind the resolute desk and had to make the call on, on, on what to do here. It, it, it's, it strikes me as a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of proposition like the president always, no matter who it is, finds him himself in because no one wants a wider war because of all the reasons you just outlined. On the flip side, no one wants to look weak at a time when there's already criticism yeah. here at home about the war because people feel like uh, this White House is siding too heavily with Israel and kind of turning a blind eye to the humanitarian crisis in Gaza. So. Joe Biden and his team, they are, are boxed in here. What possibly right. is, is the resolution here? You're not going to make everyone happy. You never will, never could. But where do you go from here and thread the needle? And by the way, it's an election year, so every little move counts. It does, but but right now, I, I don't even think you need to worry about threading the needle. You just need to do what makes the most strategic sense, and that is we tell Iran we do some negotiation. We do diplomacy in addition to military actions. We tell Iran, we don't want a war, you don't want a war, but if you attack us, you're gonna get one. And if you start a war, if you start one, we are gonna respond in a way you will not like. But if you don't, we're gonna withdraw our troops and reposition them elsewhere in the region. And as long as you don't attack us in that, then we're not gonna come after you. But then if, if they do, and this is the hard part, we say there will be a punitive response because we cannot and will not allow troops, American troops to be killed and not retaliate. That's that's a point blank. But what we do have to do is get our troops out of this vulnerability. I get it that people will say it's weak. They can talk and say whatever they want. But that is by far the better choice than saying, well, I'm not going to look weak, so I'm going to continue to strike and keep the troops there. Because now then the, the problem escalates and compounds and makes it worse. And I assure you that if Iran counterstrikes and hits something even bigger, now then we are truly going to be in a position where we may have to go to war. And that is 
catastrophic and we just can't go there. And couldn't one argue that after 150 attacks and now the first Americans dead in hostile fire, in some ways Iran has already started a war? Well, I, I mean, you, you can argue that, of course, we don't know for sure exactly to what degree Iran proper has ordered these, but here's the pro bottom line. We are in this. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks or says. These things are happening, and for sure. So what is an American's vital national interest? To prevent our country from getting drawn into a war, to protect our troops from getting pointlessly killed, and ensuring our security in the region. And that is best served by getting those troops out of harm's way even if it, it causes some embarrassment or makes us have to eat some crow. Because I can reiterate, the alternative is far worse of saying, no, we're going to keep them there and hope we don't get escalated because we almost certainly will. It almost sounds like prolonging the inevitable, right? It's just yeah. a matter of how many casualties along the way, it sounds like, mm -hmm. you know? It's, it's, it's a remarkably tough situation yeah. in so many ways. You could have predicted in October we would end up in this position. You know, it almost seemed inevitable, and, and here we are with no good decisions, really. Military expert and retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, as always, sir, thanks for your time and, and your insight. Please come back as this, I'm sure, will quickly develop, sir. Thank you. You bet. Thank you very much. Jay.